The next new smart home product is finally available. This is the Amazon Echo Hub. It is an eight inch display that you can mount on your wall or place on your countertop to have instant access to all of your different Amazon smart home devices. You can quickly view camera feeds, turn on and off lights, or you can even use it to secure your ring security system. Now there's a lot of things that this can do, but let's go ahead, get us unboxed and show you all about it. Let's get started. So here on the side of the box, you can see it's an eight inch wall mounted touchscreen. It has a smart home hub built in. So that means it's going to be able to work with many different types of smart home products. It has Amazon Sidewalk built in. You can also use Zigbee products. So if you have like a Zigbee light bulb like this, you can pair it directly to this device to control it. And then it will also work with Matter devices as well as it has a built on thread border router, which is great. It has a customizable dashboard. It has hands-free with Alexa voice assistant built in. You have microphones with an on and off button to mute it as well. Here on the back, it talks about how easy we'll be able to control your smart home. And then it works with many different smart home products that you may have heard of, Ring, Philips Hue, TP-Link, and much more. So let's get this unboxed. So in here, you can see it looks very familiar like other Echo Show devices that we've seen, but it is different where it doesn't have a big speaker on the back. So it does have speakers built in, but you can pair it with other local speakers so that it would play out of a better speaker there. And there is no camera built into here. So here on the bottom, you have some far filled microphones so that it can listen to you. You have a few speakers up here on the top. On the left side, there is nothing over here on the right side. You have the mute, so you can mute Alexa. And then you have the volume up and down. And then on the bottom, there's nothing there. And on the back, here you have the option to hide your cord, which is really cool. And then you have USB-C there in the top. Now let's go ahead and check out what's inside the box. We'll talk more about powering it in a minute. So here we do have a quick start guide we can use. And then here it does come with a pretty long USB-C cable that we can power it with. Here we have some anchors and mounting screws. Here we have the power brick. I like that nice small size, 12.6 watts. And then here we have the mount that we would use to mount it on the wall. So there you can see the front mount. Now it comes with the wall mount. If you want to have the counter mount, that is a separate accessory that you can get as well. So we're gonna mount this on and then this will just slide right on there. And that is everything in the box. Now let's talk about powering this real quick. So here we can easily plug in the cable and have it mounted down here and it's going to go down into a plug below, which would work great. But sometimes you may not want to have a cable, you might just want to have a nice display. Now with option two, you can get an in-wall pass-through cable. This allows you to put the cord right from the outlet through the wall, up to the Echo Hub, and then you don't have any cord seen. So another option is to use power over ethernet or PoE. You would need to have a network switch that supports PoE. So it's going to use ethernet to provide power right to your device. And the good thing about this is it can be placed through a wall. So you could have an ethernet run to the back of where you want this display mounted, and then you can get a USB-C to gigabit power over the ethernet dongle. Now this is pretty big, but is what this is able to do is you're able to plug in the ethernet cable here, put the other side in your PoE switch, and then plug this in the back and then it would be powered. So you could have it so no cables would be seen. So let's go ahead, get it set up right now using this PoE so you can see how that works. So here I just happen to have a cable right here that I'm gonna use. Plug that in. And now I'm just going to plug this in the back. You wouldn't need to route this through the bottom there because you're just gonna have a hole in the back of the wall right through here where you have this hidden in the wall. Now let's go ahead and see it is powering on. Now the papers in the box are also a mounting template as well as a quick start guide to help get this set up. Just like other Echo Show devices, we have the option to set this up right on the screen. So here I'm just going to choose English. Hello, ready for setup. Here I'm going to sign into my Amazon account and there will be a full keyboard on screen. That is me, we're going to agree and continue. Next, we're going to agree to privacy settings. Now we're going to give it a name. Brett's Echo Hub sounds great. And we're going to select some personal information here. It's gonna give us a better use of the product, knowing our weather and other things if it knows where we live. Here we're gonna choose where North America and our time zone. Next, we're going to choose where this is going to be in our home. So we have all the different rooms that I have in my home. I could choose the entryway, you know, if you have it by a door. 
I could choose the mudroom, but we're gonna go ahead and choose the kitchen because that's gonna be the main place that we're gonna use this. And here it's asking if we're gonna have it on a wall or on a stand, and we're gonna choose on the wall. And then we have the option to choose our preferred speaker. So if you don't want all the sounds to come out of here, I could have it choose the Echo Show 10 if we have that in the same room as well to have uh, the speaker for music. And here I could even choose a group. So all the music that's upstairs, but we're just going to have it be the speaker right here. Next, we're gonna choose our clock and photo display. So here we could choose Amazon Photos where it's automatically gonna show our photos we've uploaded, or you have a few other options here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Wild Earth for now. Next, it's talking about Amazon Sidewalk, how it can better other Amazon Sidewalk products and make its own network. So you can choose to turn this on or off. That's up to you. This device is ready. There you can hear the speakers from the top. Sounds pretty great. And now it's going through the process to load everything that I have in my home on the hub display. Now that we have it up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed so that I can then start testing it all out, see how it all works, and show you more about what this can do. Now the next step, we need to figure out where it's gonna go in the home. Now here I'm by the front door, you know, I could put it right here, but this is also at the very end of a hallway, so it's not gonna be very useful there. Now another idea I think would be really cool is if there was a mount that you could put it underneath your cabinet, so it kind of folds out and you could fold it away if you didn't want to see it then you could plug it in and easily hide the cable. So um, case manufacturers, there's an idea for you. Another idea is right here. So I'm kind of looking for a place where we're constantly walking by and we can see it in an open room. So here is another idea of putting it on the wall right here. We can see the time, the kitchen is right behind us here. So now I'm in the kitchen, we're gonna be in here a lot. So we'd be able to see it right there. We'd be able to see who's at the door when somebody rings the doorbell um, and so on. But there's no other like wall that's kind of open in the room. There's one other option down here I thought of. So if I wanted to put it right here by our thermostat, you know, it's kind of a nice place right next to a bedroom where I could adjust some setting, but it would be a redundancy having a thermostat here and then having the display here to change. So I've decided we're going to mount it right here. This is kind of a central location. I walk past here all the time. When we leave the house, I'd be able to secure the alarm system right here. Um, but I need to get wife's approval also, I can't have the cord coming down. I already know that's not allowed, so I'm going to route an ethernet cable from the basement up into here so that I can put it here without having a cable be seen. So let's go do that. Then I need to decide how high I want this. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then going to very strategically place the mount, make sure it's level, screw it in the wall. Now, if you're going to use the included cable here, you can wrap it around and mount it. And this is what that would look like when you mount it on the wall. All right, the display is installed, but not a fan of the power cable. So let's go ahead and fix that. I've already routed an ethernet cable up here. Now I just need to put it through and we're gonna put a hole behind this to plug in the adapter and then we'll have it powered without a cable in the way. Now I'm just going to cut a hole the size of the adapter. Now I'm gonna make sure that doesn't fall in the hole. And then after a few hours of fishing the cable through, you'll finally get it. So here I have the cable coming up through there going to the top of this return air and then coming up all the way to the top. And so now I'm going to terminate each end and here I'm going to plug that into the switch in the basement and then I'm going to plug that into the PoE adapter. Now one thing I'm doing here is I'm putting some electrical tape on the wire there and I'm going to put it on the screw so it doesn't fall down. And then we just need to plug it into the Echo Hub, put it back on the mount and we have finished the install. Now, if you don't have a network PoE, you can actually pick up a Wasserstein PoE. So this, you would just plug in a ethernet cable into here, and then you plug the power over ethernet cable from here into the adapter for the Echo Hub, and then you would receive ethernet and power. When you're in PoE mode, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi connected. It's getting the ethernet right from here through your internet modem, whatever. So another option if you do want to go the PoE route. 
And after a bit of work, we now have the Echo Hub installed without any cables hanging down. If you have the PoE option to be able to do that, I think this is a great way to install this smart display because it's gonna look super clean. If you do wanna just plug it in, that's an option too. You can get a cover for the cable to make it look a little better and so on. So now that we have this set up and installed, let's go ahead and look at some of the things you can do. First, let's talk about when you are not using the display. So here on the screen, it's showing a little screensaver. It's showing the weather, day of the week, as well as the day of the, and the month. And it's showing the time. And up in the top, it's showing that somebody's active in a friend's home. Now, if we get close, it has infrared where it's going to be able to detect when you come up to the display and it will adjust the display. So here I'm about five feet away and boom, it went right to the home screen of the display. So now I can interact it without having to touch the screen first. So here we are at our home screen. Now, the first thing that you can do is you can adjust where things are and how things are operating. So first we have this kitchen widget. So I just held down on the widget and you can adjust certain things. So I can remove the widget, go to the widget gallery to add more and configure the widget and then re range the widget. So if I go here, I can configure what room it is going to select. So that was for the kitchen. We are kind of kitchen and living room. I would like to see a group of rooms together. That would be really cool to have as a widget, but that currently is not here. So here we're just in the kitchen, select done. And now you see that it's showing the kitchen lights. So here, if I tap turn off all lights, it then turns off all the lights there. And then we have some of the other lights and things that are in there that we can adjust. So I can turn on the hood light just like that. That's actually one of the lights that every time I go to bed, it is still on. So it's nice that I'll just be able to walk by, tap that button, turn it off, and then I am ready to go to bed. It got pretty dark in here, so let's turn on all those lights again. And you can see that as the lights change, the display is automatically adjusting to the brightness of the room. And I've also turned down the brightness pretty far just so that my camera can display the screen right, right? but it gets really bright even though it is dimmed a little bit here. So then you can also see that one of our ring sensors is showing that the back door is closed. So I know I don't need to go and check it. And then I can even adjust the shades. So right now the shades are at 0%. So I can come in here and do full brightness on the shades or here I can just tap the open and then the shades are going to open. So that's one of the shades. Now they are grouped together right here. I can open all the smart shades that I have or blinds in the room. So. It's great that we have that. And then here you'll see the three dots on each of these where I can then go to the individual items there. So if I wanna adjust a specific shade, I can do that right on there. And again, you can do all of this by voice. Just sometimes you don't wanna use your voice and come up here to display. So that's just the first widget we have here. Second, we have a camera widget. Now this one, as soon as you see it, you wanna go in there and you wanna configure the widget because I have a ton of cameras in my home and I didn't want all of them to show. So I can go through and turn on the cameras I want to show and I can move some of them up more so that they are more at the top. And now here on the home screen, we can see those cameras. We can tap on a camera to view the camera. Let's check out our Ring Battery Plus here, see what's going on in the basement. So I can hear what's going on down there. I can talk through, hey, dinner will be ready in like an hour. All right, so they know dinner's ready. And then I also have this multi-view option where you can actually view multiple cameras at the same time, which is just so cool. So there it's pulling up the playroom. It's pulling in the front yard, which fell to the ground. Here it's pulling up the front door as well as the side yard. So it's really cool that I can see all the cameras at once. Now I do have more cameras than this. It would be cool if I could swipe through all the different feeds, but right now it's showing just those top cameras that I have selected. So we could go to the see all cameras option and then I'm gonna see all the different cameras I have here and I could choose the ones I want to see. So if I want to go in and check in on one of my Echo Show devices, I can do that as well. It's going to open up the Echo Show. Here I can see it's dark in the basement. Again, I can talk through or go to multi-cam. Now, if you wanna do that by voice, all you need to do is say, Alexa, show me my cameras. Okay and then it's gonna pull up that feed of all of your cameras. And it looks like some of the different cameras are being moved around. Hopefully there's ways to, to set specifically what I wanna see. And so there you can see it ended up changing some of the cameras and it looks like this one, the Nest cameras just haven't been able to load up very quickly. These other ones are Tapo cameras that are working great. So now let's go back home. So that is the camera widget. 
Again, if I want to adjust this at all, we can go in and rearrange the widget. If I don't want to see the room first, I could rearrange it and move it um, after the camera. So the camera is going to show up first. And if I want to remove any widgets, I can come in here and turn off those options. Now down here, I also have the option to reorganize these. So if I want my security to be first, I have the option to do that and so on. We can put those in all the different places. And at the front, you can also rearrange the order the rooms are going to show up. So if I want to do configure, configure allows you to change um, what is actually showing. So if there are some rooms here that you don't ever want to see, you can totally remove those. Uh, down here, it looks like all these need to stay. And then on the widgets, I can go through and I can adjust the settings. So here on the widgets, I can go through and configure what those widgets are instead of just long pressing. So that's what you get to organize the home screen here. Now let's check out some more of the widgets. So if we swipe over here, we can see the current weather, which is great. What's the weather tomorrow? Here's the forecast for tomorrow in Orem. Look for showers with a high of 51 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 39 degrees. Now that sounds pretty good. I'll be able to hear that from across the room and even see that display, which is nice. And here we can even adjust, you know, the volume there if we want to. Go home. So then here we have a calendar widget. So if I want to see what is happening through the day, I can, I can just quickly scroll through. I don't even need to open an app. Here we have some favorites. So those are currently showing favorite cameras. If I want to adjust this, this is where I need to go into my Alexa app and adjust some of those favorites. Right now it's only showing cameras though. I don't know if I can show more. So here I have top connections for me. I can swipe through and see top connections for Carrie. Um, so it's cool that you have these different menus for people in the family. And then here I can go to the edit option where I can edit the widgets. There I can go through and close any of the widgets that I don't want to have anymore. But then I also have the option to add more widgets. So if I go to add, you have a ton of widgets now available in the widget gallery. So here you can see some that I'm currently using, smart home groups, smart home cameras. I have top audio, what to watch, um, a ton of other widgets. So this is something that I'm gonna really need to play with to maximize what we can do on here. I'm hoping to find some like reminders to do list for the kids to be able to quickly check off their, you know, before they go out and play, they need to do a few different things. Um, here we've already added the smart home favorites. Here we have some new widgets that are available. So animal letters. So it has as much of the widgets that you'd see on the Echo Show displays. Here we have some more smart home widgets. So I'm using those. It looks like we have what is called Evo dashboard. So see your current Evo home and around connected status from Evo control skill. Here we have music and audio. And then here you have all categories. So there are a ton of different categories of widgets. I think this is something I'm gonna to have to dive into further to see more about what you can really do with these widgets because that's what's going to make this display really impactful instead of just another tablet in your home or another Echo Show device. How is this actually going to be useful for your family in helping you keep track of things and get things done? So those are the widgets that are available right now. So back here at the home, I've been playing with a few different widgets. Here we have our shopping widget. Add blueberries to the shopping list. I've put blueberries on your shopping list. Here it shows the list and we can swipe away items if we don't need them anymore. Um, and then we can go back home here. Here I found some notes app so I can simply type in a note if I want to edit this. Um, you know, if I want to make a reminder for myself for later, I can come in here and edit it. All right, and then we tap done. There it is, so it's updated that. Here we have calendar and there you can see all the events that we have today and you can scroll through and see tomorrow, and then you can choose the day of the week that you want. You can see the list here, or you can go into the daily view where it's gonna show you what is happening at certain times of the day. So it's great, you can see all that. It would be nice if I could make a lock screen where it's only showing the calendar, that would be pretty cool. Then over here we have the kitchen widget, and here we have weather, cameras, and more. Let's go ahead and see if we can add a multiple widget and see if we go into smart home. Here I've already added a few of these. Let's go and add my smart home favorites. So this should pull up from the favorites that I've added in the app. Oh, and it does give us the option to add it again. Awesome. So now up the front we have favorites and we have groups. So let's go ahead and configure a group. So let's say we want to configure the entryway. 
So there it's out of that group. So here I can turn on these lights right here and the other lights and I can see the current status of the sensor. So that's really cool. Here in the favorites, let's see what we can adjust. So if I hold down on an empty space, it just lets me rearrange the favorites. It doesn't let me adjust what is showing there, which is weird because in the app, it lets me add a bunch of favorites. So it would be nice if those sync together a little bit more. So here we have our favorites from the app and then here on the hub. So here you can see that I have a few different room lights, but those aren't even showing. Then the next thing it's showing is the hood light. So that is right there where I can control the um, stove light there. And then down here, it's showing some other Echo devices that aren't showing there. I'd like to be able to drop in on them easily. And then it's showing some of the cameras which I can pop up. So here it is showing the Echo Show 15 and the Echo Show 10, but it's not a direct representation of what's on the favorites app here and on the favorites app here. And then if you have more than six devices, you can't even see what's next. So that's a bit of a bummer. Hopefully there's more integration between these so that you can have some more customizable widgets right there on the home screen. Now let's talk about the bottom row here. So these are quick things that you can do to adjust devices in your home. So right here we have security. So right now my Ring Protect security system is disarmed. So I can quickly arm it just by pressing there. And I have a keypad over here. So it gave me a notification that it is now armed. And to make any adjustments here on the Echo Hub, I need to head into the Amazon app and go into the settings, go to my Ring Alarm in the app. And then I need to dis and then I need to enable disarm and then I can set an access code here. And so there you can see that the Echo Hub now is allowing for my access code. And there we have disarmed it. And here we can set the away status and then it's gonna go through the arming process. So that does take a minute. Let's see what that shows here. The full minute and it's... <laughs> <laughs> and on all my devices that's making this sound to say, hey, something is gonna happen. Let's go ahead and disarm that. So next we have active media. So when I go into active media, I can see what is playing on other speakers in the home. So there we can see up on the Echo Show 8, it is currently playing a song and you can see what song it is. We can adjust the volume. I can even tap here and select other places that I want it to play. So if I wanna move that down to my Echo Show 10, I have those controls right here. And so now it's playing down on the speaker in the basement. And if I wanted to select a group of devices, here I have the option to do upstairs. So when I tap upstairs, confirm, it's then going to play on all the available in the upstairs. So it's so cool to have the display to be able to control all of that. And this display is never going to be taken over by the kids because they can't sit here and watch movies or anything like that. It is a display up and out of the way. Next we have locks. So if I want to see the locks, I have my basement that is currently locked. I can tap on there, enter my access code if I want it unlocked. So next we have thermostat. So instead of going all the way over <laughs> down the hall to the thermostat, I could just quickly come here and I wanted to adjust the thermostat here. And now I can see both my thermostats at the same time. If I wanna make sure they're the same temperature and everything, it's great that I have the option right there. And you can go through, I have some other devices that are showing as thermostats, but they're just temperature sensors. So there you go, it's nice to have that. And then I can even go in further. I can adjust the fan if I want it on and off. So it looks like I'm not able to adjust if it's heating or cooling here. I believe I can do that by voice. Set loft to cooling. It's set to cool. And there you go. I am able to set that to cool. Set loft to heat. It's set to heat. And there it changes instantly. Next we have lights. So here it's saying that nine lights are on, which is so cool that I can just quickly see all of that. I have a few lights that are currently not plugged in. And so here it's saying we can control power, brightness, and color for your compatible smart light. So here it's showing, what is that, 12 lights at a time. So I can go through, I can see the lights that I am under right here. So you can see they're blue when they're on. So here I can turn on a light. If I tap on the three dots, it gives me a few more options. I can adjust the brightness. So we can turn that way up. I can change it from a different shade to color. So I don't have to go in and find all those details in the app or use my voice. I can adjust the color right here, which is pretty cool. And here at the top, you have the option to turn all the lights on or all the lights off. Next, we have the camera. So we've seen this before where we can view all of the different cameras. So we can go through and select the one camera we want and it will then show that full screen. So here, let's check out the front door. 
And there we go, pretty quick to load. We can talk through it, turn on multi-view, and keep an eye on what is happening outside. Next we have switches. Oh, okay, it looks like I need to adjust some switches to become lights, because some weren't showing up in the other window, so that is a good thing to look out for. So here we have the main Fourier lights. I can tap on that. It's gonna turn the lights off right here, and so on. So you may need to adjust what is happening there. I can turn off all the lights just with the press of the button right there. And I want to turn this one back on. So that switches and then you also have plugs. So they're separated in that. So if something's not showing up where you want it to, you can check out my video at the end where I show you how you can go through and reorganize your whole home and choose categories for the specific device that you are using. So then we have the last option here, which is other. Under other, it's gonna show everything that is not one of those categories. So we have some other blinds. So it would be nice if there was a category for blinds, but there's not one. You can see the doors, if it's open or closed. We have other contact sensors and so on that you can go through and see. But now we have all these different settings under other right there. So that's an overview of the main features that you have available here. You have your quick access to your rooms, your widgets, and then your quick access to home control there. Next, I wanna have the ring doorbell pop up on here whenever the doorbell rings. So what I'm gonna do is go into cameras here in the Alexa app, and then here I'm gonna to go to front door, tap on settings, and we're gonna change the announcement devices. So you can see which devices are having an announcement here and which ones are not. So we now need to find the Echo Hub, which is right here. So once we check that, go back, now it is going to notify us when somebody rings the door. Someone is at the front door. And then here you can tap the mic to talk through. Hi, how can I help you? Hey, would you like to buy some cookies? Uh, no, we already bought Girl Scout cookies. Oh, you do? Next we have routines. So up here we can see the routines that we have made. As of right now, I don't see this as like a motion routine. So if in the morning I walk by, it would be cool I could have my morning routine set up. I don't see that yet. But then we have our other routines here. So if I want to close the living room shades, I can just tap on the button right there. It's now going to close all of my shades. So that's currently running. But if I want to open the living room shades, I can press the button and then all of those are going to open. So if you have a bunch of routines, that's gonna be really helpful. And up here in the top left, you have the time and the top right, you have a notification about other devices uh, from your family members or whoever you have in your contacts. Here, I'm getting a notification that grandpa's home. So now let's go ahead and go into the settings. So here we have home, which is gonna take you to the dashboard. Here you have the actual settings. So we can go, we can adjust Bluetooth, we can check out our network, which we're currently wired. Here you can adjust your profile and your family. So you can go through and check out the kid profiles and add more if you need to. Next we have clock and display. So if you want to adjust the clock at all, you can do that. So here it's going to have an idle screen. Choose what shows on screen when your device is not in use. So we want to have that on. Select clock and photo display. So here we can choose, do we want personalized photos, modern, playful, or photography. So here we have modern, where we can go through and choose a few different options here, and you can even customize those more. So a ton of things that are available there. So then we have night mode. So when the lights are all off, it's going to still display something, but in a very low light, you know, red on the screen. So you'll be able to see that um, even if the lights are off without distracting you, and then you even have the 24 hour clock there. So let's say we choose playful here. I want to edit how it looks. We can change the background or the clock face. So if you want to have a big clock face, you can do that. You can have it down here on the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the big clock face so we can see it from across the room and let's save that. And now um, when we go to the home screen and this locks, that is what we'll display. Next we have display and brightness. So right now you can see where my brightness is at. I can crank it up right there and you can see that's way too bright. So let's turn it down. And then we can do color display. So if you want a more cool look, you can have that. So it's really blue or you can go to the more warm look where there's not gonna be as much blue light coming in. Um, I think this middle looks pretty good for now and you can adjust that as time goes on. Here we have adaptive brightness. Here we have sunrise effects. So if you wanted to have an alarm on here, it would gradually brighten up the display during this time, 15 minutes before the alarm starts. And then you can have it automatically dim um, after it's not in use for 10 minutes. 
And then here we have auto wake. So when you get close, it has that infrared where it's going to automatically wake up and we can look into the proximity detection. So you could turn off that when it's muted. So if the mute's on, it's not gonna work, but here you can have that turn on and we have auto wake. And then you can also have auto wake when in night mode. It's not gonna turn on right now, so it doesn't blind you and you're not used to it. But if you want that, you can go ahead and turn that on. Next we have sounds. So if we want to control the media on here, the alarm sounds, we can turn on our ascending alarm, we can adjust the equalizer. Here you can choose the alarm sound that you're going to have. Now here I have a ton of sounds because I have kid devices where I have the subscription for that. You can change the notification. And then you can also have it alert you when it hears that you're going to ask a request or when it ends the request. So this is helpful if you need to hear a little beep before um, you start talking to it or you know that it's done listening to you. So you can turn those on and off. Here under privacy, we can read all about our voice history and we can adjust any of those settings. Looks like it's pulled up kind of a web page here, which is cool that we could do a lot more. Um, so you can adjust that as needed. Here we have do not disturb. So if you don't want this to make noise when somebody rings your doorbell or uh, you know your kid's napping, you wanna come in here, turn that on, you can do that. Or you can set it scheduled. So at a certain time of the day, it turns off or at night, this doesn't make any noise and you can have it start and end there. Here you have communication. So um, when somebody's calling, you can have this become a ringer. Now there is no camera on this. It would just be for voice calls, but I have the option to turn that on and off. Here we have device options. So if I wanna change the name, we can do that. If we wanna change where it is placed on the wall or on a counter, we can do that. We have our actual device location. We have our language. We can set the Alexa voice. So here there are a few different voices you can use. And then here we can change the wake words. So you have a few other options here. Great to see that all of them are available on this device if you wanna change that up. We can adjust the date and time. So you can change your region or time zone. You have distance, so right now we are in miles, so it's gonna tell me in miles how far away something is. Here's the proximity detection again. So if we want to turn on Amazon Sidewalk or learn more, it's gonna tell you about how to do that. Then here we have web options. So we do have a browser on here, so we could adjust the Silk browser. So if I want to change the settings that are available there. And so we have a few other settings there. Next, we have restrict access. So if we don't want certain things to be accessed on here, we can do that. We could um, turn off Amazon Photos. We could turn off web browsing, web search, um, video providers. We can go through and turn those off. So here it looks like we can do Hulu and Food Network Kitchen. So if you want those disabled, you are able to do that. And then here we have calendar. So right now it is accessing my calendar and we can link it to the right person. So it's going to display for the family. So if I want it to link to my wife's account, I can have it do that. So it's displaying her calendar versus showing my calendar all the time. So here I can see it's linked. I can add multiple calendars there as well. And here it's showing the family calendar and I could have other notifications from the calendar. Here, if you need help, you can go through the help settings and it's gonna to talk to you about how to adjust all those things. I might still need to read through all of that. And then here we have accessibility. So first off, we have voice view screen reader. So here the voice view provides spoken feedback when you touch items on the screen. So that would be very helpful. Then we have screen magnifier, we have the color inversion, and we have color correction. Now that was for vision. For hearing, we do have captions. So you can enable captions. And then we also have for speech adaptive listening mode. So it recognizes different speech patterns like stuttering and gives you more time to finish speaking. So it's not going to uh, process your command as much. And then we have tap to use Alexa. So you can actually come up to the screen and tap to interact instead of with voice. And then you have the communication without speech. Enable calling, messaging, drop in and announcements via touch and turns on transcripts for received messages. And then you do have RTT, enable real-time text to use um, for communicating during calls. So great to see a full list of accessibility features there. And then legal and compliance. And then let's go ahead and check out what we can adjust in the Alexa app. So here on the Echo Hub, I have volume control so I can adjust the volume and you'll see the volume adjust over here. I can drop in with a voice call so I can see what is happening in the room. Hello, can you hear me now? Hey, is Dan 
dinner ready? So I can talk through it from here, and then I can turn on and off Do Not Disturb. I have the options to add alarms, and then I can adjust the photo display. In the settings, we can adjust the audio settings, so I can change the equalizer there. I can change what the default speaker is, so if I want it to play on a different speaker, I can do that. I can pair a gadget. I can change sounds, Do Not Disturb, communication, um, all those other things that we had here. Here I can also turn on follow-up mode, so that allows it to continue listening after it responds to one of my questions, and I can adjust the photo display here to do more. So you have a lot that you can do on either of the displays. Now here at the top, we have the do not disturb. We can adjust the brightness, change notifications. So if we want to see what are new notifications, there we can find all of that information. Here we have alarms, so we can see if there are any alarms currently set. No current alarms. Here we can go into the photo frame and change that. So let's go ahead and turn on Amazon Photos. And here it's saying, which ones do you want? Which album? And let's go ahead and choose your photos. And we can start the photo frame. And now we can see all of our awesome pictures up here, which is really fun. Here we have communicate, so we can drop in on other devices, we can announce something, we can call, we can message and show contacts. We can then look at music, so if we go into music, it's gonna pull up Amazon Music where we can see what we have recently been listening to. We have video, so if you do want to watch videos on here, it's going to pull up some channels that we can use. We can do Fire TV channels, Prime Video, Hulu, YouTube, and other web applications. So again, if you don't want this, you can disable it, but it's cool that you do have the options if you want this playing in the background while you're cooking dinner or whatever, you can do all that. Here we can go to our routines, which we've seen on the routines tab, and we have the active media controls that we can adjust right there. So that is pretty much all the settings that you can change on the Echo Hub. Now I mentioned before how you can connect all kinds of different smart home products to the Echo Hub. You can do that through the Alexa app, but let's show you how you can connect a Zigbee product directly to the Hub. So this is the Sanglet Zigbee light bulb. So I have a brand new fixture here that I'm going to install it in. So all I need to do is screw in the light bulb and then I need to ask it, Alexa, discover new devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Power on your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. So there, it already started to look for the devices. There, it started flashing, and it should have discovered it. I found two new devices. To connect these devices, go to the Alexa app and tap on devices. So there, it found them. Let's head into the app. So here in the app, I found that there is now a few new lights. So here we have first light, and if I turn that on and off, that is that light. So now I can go into the app, give it a name, move it into a different group, but now I can control it by a voice. Dim the first light. There, it turned down the brightness. Alexa, set first light to blue. Alexa, turn off first light in 30 seconds. Okay, I'll turn off the first light in 30 seconds. So then here I can control it right from here, or I can use the app to control it and set routines and other things like that. And then you can also ask it to turn off the light at different times, so you can use that routine. And then here after 30 seconds, the light will then turn off, just like that. So I've now added the light bulb into the room, so I can come over here and we can find the kitchen lamp. I can simply tap to turn that on. If I tap on the three dots here, I have the option to adjust the brightness and over here I can adjust the color. So if I really wanna fine tune what the light is doing, I have the option to do it right here on the screen. Alexa, open Silk. Here is Silk. Now it does have a web browser, so if you are using some other platform for your smart home, you might have the option to actually view your devices and control them from here. Now here I'm testing out home.google.com. Currently I've turned off a bunch of my cameras, but here you can see my cameras available. Let's go ahead and go into the playroom here, 
and we can see the camera. And I did a test where I left this on for an hour and it stayed on this screen. So if you do want to use some other type of website for your smart home platform, that might be an option. If it goes away, you would just need to go back into the settings and pop it back up. But here you can see a live camera feed um, from the basement there and that works great. Let's test it out from down there. Let's turn on the mic. Now, if you're using like Home Assistant, I know there's bigger dashboards that you could use that have a lot more features. So this might be a great option to be able to do that if that's something that you're looking for. Now, I do have a ton of different devices connected to my home, but every once in a while, I'll see this device that's saying it's not working, even though clearly it works right here and I am able to adjust that light without any issues. So there could be some improvements there. So what's the verdict on the Echo Hub? Well, overall, I think this is a pretty cool device. I love that I was able to fully incorporate this into my smart home. There's no wires, it looks really great. And so I love that I finally have a display that is able to control all of my different smart home devices. Overall though, it is a little bit clunky. And of course it's new, so there's some things that are definitely missing from here. Now, when moving things around and trying to organize things, it's pretty slow, so you gotta be a little bit patient with it there. Um, but then some of the other things that I think are missing is the ability to really customize what this can do. Now, they luckily have incorporated all the widgets where you can add some fun things to do and make it a little bit more customized, but without those, you wouldn't really have a smart home control panel here. My brother has built his own smart home control panel with Home Assistant, and it's crazy the amount of things that he can do. He can have a camera camera always being displayed. He can have other things that are popping up. And so it would be cool if there was some more customization like that. Some of the things that I would like to see that I think could be incorporated on this really easily is being able to have a custom widget where I can choose exactly the rooms that I want it to show. And I can see if the lights are on in that room and I can tap a button to turn off those lights instead of having to go through and see all the lights. Cause sometimes I don't want all the lights. I just want specific rooms and I don't want to have to go through all the rooms over here on the side. It would be nice if I also had the option to incorporate specific routines into the favorites because sometimes I just don't want to turn on and off a room. I want to be able to control a routine that changes many different devices in different rooms at the same time. So being able to have a favorites option where it was certain lights, certain rooms, certain routines would be really cool to have all in one amongst being able to control individual devices in the home. So I think this is a great start. Um, and over time, I'm sure we're going to see it improve as well as the software improve. And one thing I would have liked to see a camera on here. It would be nice if I could drop in on here, check out the kitchen, have a conversation, um, do the video chat if I was away or whatnot. But so that'd be cool if it's incorporated. Um, not a huge deal, but I would like to see that. It's nice that I can drop in by voice. And then I like having all the quick controls down here at the bottom. And it's nice that I can see how many lights are currently on. So if you have any further questions about the Amazon Echo Hub, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see more tutorials on how you could actually incorporate this or how certain things work, please let me know as well. A huge thank you to Amazon for providing this to me early so I could test it out, as well as some of the other Ring devices. And if you're interested in checking one out, you can click the link down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.